All right, so unboxing the, the laptop here. And just to kind of give you a little sense of the construction and it's all plastic. Some things that uh, that I do like about it, let me see if I can get this lined up in the thing right, is the that the keyboard doesn't pop off. So I'm giving these to, I bought a couple of these, I'm going to give them to my kids for Christmas and so that's why I'm doing some of these upgrades just to make them last a little bit longer. But the, the touchpad is kind of integrated into the top and then the keyboard is not one that you know pops up and stuff around the edge which I like but it's all plastic every little bit of its plastic so um, it's just one of those things that's going to take only so much abuse so um, screws there's a lot of screws that you got to take out and the first thing to do of course is to take the battery off you do that with these two little brads right here this is really important um, there are there are two little rubber things here, rubber feet here, and those have to come off because there are two screws underneath here. And if you don't get those screws out and you go to start taking the cover off, you'll crack this right here. Don't ask me how I know that. I thought I had all the screws. There's also two screws in here as well, and then you can see all these screws are very very obvious. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 total screws that you're grabbing um, out of the thing here. So I'm, I'll pause and pick the video back up once I have all the screws out. All right, so we have all the screws out. And the good news is, is that they're all the same. So when you're putting it back in, you don't have to worry about that. So what I do at this point, I've got a little set of tools that I bought a while back. Um, I'll just tell you what this thing is if you want to, if you want to know something I bought off of Amazon, um, and it's for it's for replacing uh, or fixing cell phones. And so they have all these little plastic picks and stuff in there, where you can get in between stuff and all kinds of different screwdrivers and everything. And so I'm just using that. The key here is there's on the back side, you need to take, there's the side here with the VGA port and all that on it. You're going to need to take this side off first because the thing's going to have to slide out that way. And so what I do is I just close the thing up and then I just went in with this little, you can see this little tool here has got kind of a little hooked edge on it. And I went in here and just got around the hooked edge and then just started. Um, you know, very carefully taking it off and then once it's off this way then you can just kind of slide it down like that and so now we're here looking at this piece I'll get my other stuff put together and then we'll I'll show you what, what to do on the other stuff alright so the next part is this little caddy here and like uh, another YouTuber um, who who I am following directions here for as well, um, I use the same thing and it works great for me. And I already took all the screws out. So there's like two screws, four screws on the back, and then two screws that mount the little uh, connector here. And so this is all, the only piece that you need. And the problem here, the way this thing is mounted in here like this, it has to lay like this which I don't think there you probably pull one of those screws up or something but the problem is that there is no there are no holes in fact you probably I'm just kind of looking here to see yeah so the problem here is that there are no uh, no holes here to match everything up to so this really doesn't work and so um, you know what ultimately what you end up doing here is um, connecting this to the drive 
I think this goes this way. Oh, goes this way. And then the drive would go this way and then connect this way. And there's a bunch of different things you can do here. Somebody else put some, uh, some Velcro tape down. I happen to be a guitar player. And so I've got some stuff here that you use to get put pedals down on uh, guitar pedal boards. And so that's what I'm going to use. You could, you know, say you could glue it or whatever if you wanted to. You could do whatever you wanted to do to it. But um, uh, the case will sit fairly flush against this thing right here. So when you put the case back on, the back case, it'll sit kind of flush. And I don't anticipate uh, having too much, too many issues there with that moving around. Now the other thing you want to do here is I bought some memory and so since this is a single channel board you're not going to be able to use it. You're not going to get any, this doesn't even show up if you have it on there. So 8 gigs it is and then you just you just seat it this way. You can it only, It's only going to go one way and you seat it one way and push it down. So now there's your 8 gig of RAM. This is your new SSD drive. All of this right here, this is the uh, that M2.0 uh, format. This is that. This is the 32 gig drive right here. And so you can actually pop this little connector up here and take this off, and you can disconnect it. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit uh, more. I've got two of them here, and I did a lot of experimenting on the other laptop trying to figure out what to do. But I basically figured out how to get it where this drive doesn't even show up anymore. Um, we're just going to format this one. Uh, I'm not doing any of the cloning or anything like that. We're just going to start over from scratch with some media um, and do a fresh install and just use this disk and this uh, 32 gig disk just disappears um, and you don't even see it anymore. Um, so then uh, of course the next part here is, is to just put everything back together again and so that's pretty straightforward to do. Next thing I'll get once we do the boot and get everything going, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so um, now I'm here in my office and got everything plugged in. The, the bottom's still off. I got my USB plugged into the one of the ports over on the left-hand side. And basically what we're going to do now is look at the BIOS configuration, and then I'm going to show you the Windows setup part of it. And then that's pretty much it as far as getting this laptop going. So the way that, uh, that you might have to do this uh, initially, the way you get into the BIOS is to hit the power and immediately hit the escape button and then the F10 button, and that'll get you into the BIOS. You might just be able to hit, you'll see down over here in the corner, it'll say F10 to pause the, to pause the setup part, or to pause the boot process. So sometimes just hitting the escape button pauses the boot process and gives you a menu. One of those is to go into the BIOS, but you may have to hit the escape and the F10. In my case, I can just hit the escape button. Sometimes you have to hold it. Sometimes it'll end up at the HP menu and you just have to start over again. But there, I just you saw that hit the F10. It's going to bring the menu up here. I'm going to go I'm going to hit F10 to get into the BIOS. I've got the latest version of the BIOS it shipped with that. Um, what I'm going to show you here is a couple things that I have changed. The first one is I've enabled legacy support. Um, and and that's dis that's disabled by default, and that that opens up these options down here. Um, and what I've also done is I've taken the USB disk manager, uh, USB diskette key hard uh, key USB hard disk for both of these to the very top. Um, uh, in my case, we're gonna we're gonna manually select that anyway, so I don't even know that that really matters. I just did that when I was messing around with it. Um, and, and what you can see here is that if I go to pick on the UEFI here, you'll see the only disk that it shows is that 32 gig disk um, that's built in. And even though the SSD is hooked up, strangely, I've actually walked through the setup process one time already on this device before just I started doing the camera stuff. And of course, it, it actually windows, the Windows setup actually shows the SSD drive. So this might be the first BIOS I think I've ever seen that just doesn't enumerate all of the disks that it sees in in the drive. If you wanted this to show up, uh, if you wanted to, you could boot just out of the box, boot to the 32 gig um, Windows install, have, and and then if you open up the disk manager in Windows 10, you'll see the SSD drive in Windows. You just have to format it. 
Um, so you could theoretically just set this computer up and boot off of the 32 gig and then just have the, the what, whatever size SSD you added, you could have that as like a program. You, you basically would just stop installing things on the 32 gig drive and you would start installing things on the 240. I'm giving these to my kids. I don't know what they're going to do with them. I don't want them to run the hard drive out of space. It'll obviously start to perform bad when it gets uh, the hard drive starts to get full. I just don't want to mess with this. That's why I'm doing this here. But anyway, this is maybe the first time I've seen a BIOS that, that didn't show the, the drives that were installed. So instead of going through the boot process here, I'm going to turn this off. And when I turn it back on again, this instead, this time I'm going to, I'm going to boot to the USB drive. So usually you just wait and see that there it is. Now we're going to hit the F9 key. The F9 is the boot device options. So we'll hit F9. And then the third option here is my USB stick. And so this will start the Windows 10 install. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to pick it back up again. I, I just take all the defaults essentially all the way to um, where you get to the spot where you can start to see all the all the um, all the uh, partitions on both of the drives, and so I'll show you those, and then we'll kind of I'll show you what to do at that point. All right, so here's the screen that I was talking about. Um, hopefully you can see this okay. I'll show you. Move this up a little bit closer here. I'll try to hold this steady here when I go through this process. Um, so the disk that I want to install this on is this second partition, or this drive one, partition two. Drive zero is the 32 gig um, that's already built in. So you can see it's 27.9 windows and it's got some other partitions and things in there. At this point, what you can do is click every single one of these and start deleting partitions until you just have two, where you have the unallocated space for drive zero and the unallocated space for drive one. And then we're going to pick uh, drive one as the install location. Now, this drive, I think, already, my SSD that I added in there, it already had some stuff on it. Your SSD, when you put it in, may just show up as drive one, unallocated space. So now here are my two drives. This is my internal 32 gig, and this is my SSD that I've added. And I'm just going to say install Windows on that one. And so what's going to happen here is it's going to do the install, and from now on it's just going to boot uh, to that disk. And once it gets all booted up, I'll show you the di the disk the this the excuse me the disk management utility <clears throat> and that you can format that 32 gig it'll be available and you could use it as storage or you could use it as something um, but basically at this point we're just using the uh, the added SSD drive and we're just basically have completely done away with the internal 32 gig so be back in a second once uh, Windows gets installed All right, so the install is done, and I'm over here in Windows now, and I went over to um, Computer Management, which you can just right-click on the Windows logo right there and go to Computer Management. And one of the options down here is Disk Management, and this will enumerate all the disks. And so now you can see that if I open up my um, Explorer here and go look at the PC, I only have one uh, one hard drive here, which is this 120 gig drive. It's lost a little bit of it because of NTFS um, but I don't see that that 29 gig drive which is the one that's built into the system it's right here I could create a volume out of this and I could format it and it would show up as the D drive or whatever I wanted to name it um, but because again I'm giving this to my kid I don't want to confuse them and and have this partition out there so the way that it is right now is that again we just have um, the C drive and we're good to go. Now this is a fresh install so I'm going to have to go out to the HP uh, website to the driver site and I'm going to have to download um, all of the the various 
drivers and things like that. I think there's really just an audio driver and a video driver and then a driver for the touchpad. Um, and, and so anyway, now you've got a completely fresh install and everything works great. And, um, you know, uh, I guess the next step of course is to put everything back together again and you're good to go. So for a couple hundred bucks, um, I think the hard drive was maybe 39 bucks and the, the cage was another, uh, the, the adapter to fit the SSD drive to the optical port um, was like another seven or eight bucks or something like that. And then um, I bought a crucial kit, I'll put a link to it in the YouTube video, um, with two eight gig DIMMs for memory and I think that was probably 30 bucks or something too. So really for 300 bucks, this is a, a pretty decent PC with eight gig of, eight gig of memory, a fast hard drive and, um, and a pretty decent processor, especially if you're not doing anything too crazy uh, CPU wise. So uh, there you go. Have fun.